How's it going everybody? Bishop Cheese here. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. As we go forward into the future, we're all looking forward to what the new year has in store for us. But I want to reminisce about some of my favorite things to happen in 2023 with a top 10 video. How original. This list will mainly comprise of media elements such as games, movies, and TV shows. Nothing too personal about myself because really, who wants to know that? <laughs> But before we do get on the list, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to every one of you. Whether you subscribe, watch, comment, whatever it is, your support in 2023 has meant the world to me. It was only in November of 2022 that I only had 11 subscribers. And now a little over a year later, we're at over 400 subscribers. That is absolutely crazy. I cannot still fathom how we're here, you have no idea how much this means to me, and I can't really express how thankful I am. So again, thank you, thank you so much for your support, and I hope you continue to support me in 2024. Final warning, there are going to be spoilers in this, and this is your first and only spoiler warning. You have been warned. Number 10, the end of the DCEU. Now this one may come across as a strange thing to be happy about, but with the release of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, the DCEU is finally over, and thank God for that too, as this universe has been a tragic shit show of media for years. Going back as far as 2016 when Batman vs Superman was released, one of the worst superhero movies in my opinion, and it was only the second movie of the universe. Now don't get me wrong, there are some gems in this universe and some great portrayals of these beloved characters, but I can count them all on one hand. While the rest of its movies is like an endless sea of wasted time and potential. They could have had something great here, but they rushed it and went in without a plan. Even their reboot attempt failed horribly, and don't even get me started with the Schneider Cut. That movie is a colossal waste of time. Yes, it is better than the Justice League movie we got in 2017, I agree with that. But it's too goddamn long! For a movie to be three hours long, it needs to have some kind of justification behind it. Like say, oh, I don't know, Avengers Endgame? This movie is four fucking hours long, and at the end of the day, it's just the same SHIT movie as the 2017 one! Yes, it has some cooler shit in it, which is nice and cool to see, but the outcome of the movie, AND THE UNIVERSE, DOESN'T CHANGE! <sighs> I'm so glad this shit is done, man. I really am. <laughs> Number 9. Talk to me. Horror movies are always a coin toss of either being really good or really shit. And thankfully, Talk to Me was on the right side of that coin toss. The premise of this movie is simple and one we've seen... God, how many number of times in other horror movies? I don't know, it's a big number. <laughs> But the execution for this movie was brilliant and stood out from many other horror movies that do the same thing or similar. The movie doesn't rely on cheap jump scares to get you, but dives really heavily into the creep factor and suspense to make you feel uneasy for the whole film. I had no idea what was going to happen next and was on the edge of my seat the whole time. It was a refreshing experience in a horror movie to make me feel that way. Also the cast. The cast was amazing. They were filled with actors and actresses that I generally don't know, but they nailed it, man. Like, absolutely nailed it. There was no bad performance, bad character throughout the entire film. It was just amazing. Without a doubt, my favorite horror movie of the year, and probably one of my favorite going forward. Number 8, Ahsoka. Now, this show has had some controversy with fans, but for me, a massive Star Wars fan, it was amazing. Was it perfect? No, absolutely not. It definitely has its flaws. But in my opinion, what it does right outweighs those flaws easily. This show was one I was very hyped for from the beginning because not only is it an Ahsoka show, it is also a Rebels sequel show that I have been waiting six long years for. Now, some people may not have watched Rebels because it looked inferior to its predecessor, The Clone Wars. Or you may not have watched it because it's just an animated show and you only watch the live action shows because you're an idiot. But I guarantee you, Rebels is definitely as good as Clone Wars and is worth the watch. Seeing these characters from Rebels come to live action like Hera, Sabine, Ezra, and Thrawn 
fucking amazing, man. I geeked the fuck out so hard. But also to see Hayden Christensen return as Anakin Skywalker, and he was even wearing the Clone Wars gear? Bro! That was the cherry on top. The creme de la creme of the whole series. There isn't a word to say how excited I was for this moment. Conviction. A standout of the show has to go to Ray Stevenson's Balin Skull, who unfortunately passed after making the show. His portrayal of the character was phenomenal. One of the best characters to come from the show, and probably one of the best characters to come from Star Wars in recent years. It's a shame we won't be able to see his story going forward, at least in live action. Maybe they could make a comic book about it? I think that'd be pretty cool. All in all, I can't wait to see the future of Star Wars going forward. Please don't fuck it up, Disney. Number 7, John Wick 4. Now you're probably wondering why this is so low on the list. Well, it's quite simple. I like everything else more than this. But that is not to say that I don't like this movie. This movie is absolutely fucking crazy. There are only two more movies ahead of this, I'm just letting you know now. The John Wick movies have always been amazing. Each one improving upon the previous one in some way, if not every way that they could. The scale, the stakes, the universe, the characters, the action. How the fuck do they do it? always creating inventive ways to keep the audience engaged, and they nail it every single time, and 4 is no exception. Every character in this show, new and returning ones, are all fucking brilliant. Keanu Reeves, fucking brilliant. The standout though for me would have to be Donnie Yen's character. He is absolutely magnificent, and I hope we see more of him going forward. But the thing that I probably like the most about this movie it ends. And what I mean is, it ends for John Wick. His story has come to an end. Which a lot of movies and TV shows are afraid to do. They're afraid to say, this is the definitive end. There can't be a more definitive end for John Wick. And while I want more out of this universe, I am very pleased with the ending for John Wick. Finally getting the freedom he's been searching for. With this movie giving me a satisfying ending to an amazing character, the John Wick quadrilogy is going to be a movie series I return to for many years to come. Number 6, Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I'm not a massive fan of Harry Potter. I'm probably considered a casual fan at very best. I've only watched the movies, not read any of the books, blasphemous I know. I like the movies, don't get me wrong, but I've never been that invested in Harry Potter. However. The world of Harry Potter is always something that's intrigued me, and that's something Hogwarts Legacy allows me to explore to my heart's content. We finally get to attend Hogwarts ourselves as our own character, even for a casual fan. How could you not want this? Hogwarts is one of the most popular schools in all of fiction, if not the most popular. Both the school and the world are full of secrets, characters, tasks, quests, side missions. Oh my, there is something for everyone in this game. I mean, just exploring in this game is fun. Why is flying so much fun? Combat is fluent, engaging, and always a blast. Oh, and speaking of a blast... The Dark Arts are fun as fuck! I never get sick of that! And I personally really like the story they went with for this game. Is it perfect? No. No game is. But my god, even for a casual fan, this game has everything any Potter fan could ever have wanted, please get a sequel. Number 5, Jedi Survivor. Expectations for this game were set very high from the get-go, not only because I'm a massive Star Wars fan, but also because the first game, Fallen Order, was insanely good! Survivor took what its predecessor did and cranked it to 11 from the get-go, giving us all the things we could have ever wanted and more in the sequel Star Wars game. Like fast travel! There were open worlds to explore and my god some of them felt massive, sometimes overwhelmingly massive. The combat got updated and it felt like a whole different new game, I swear to god, double bladed lightsaber has never felt so good, oh! Boss battles also hit a lot harder in this game, not only from the shit that they could do, which can get a little crazy but each feels unique, bringing something different to the encounter, allowing for a more diverse and fun experience when fighting bosses. Unless you fight this cunt! The story of the game was both simple and yet fantastic, and I love the connection that they did with putting in the High Republic era. It's an era of Star Wars which I am super fascinated by and wish they delved a little bit more into. 
and the characters. My god, the characters. We've got returning favorites from the first game and new ones alike, and even some surprise guest characters. Every one of these characters, new and old, are all absolutely brilliant. I could not get enough of them and their growth from the first game. It was beautiful to witness. Well, mostly. The characters take Cal on one hell of an emotional roller coaster, and you're right there with him! Anywhere from spontaneous excitement to gut wrenching heartache, all the way to overwhelming rage. This game was an absolute blast, living up to the high expectations I had for it, and has now become my favorite Star Wars game. I don't like your chances of beating it. Number 4 Live Action One Piece. When I first heard One Piece was being turned into a live action series, I instantly removed the thought from my mind, cause as history tells us, live action adaptations are just not good. Boy was I wrong. After it aired, I heard good things about it and thought, fuck it, why not, I'll give it a shot. And I gotta say, this show was fucking insane. The curse was finally broken, a live action adaptation of an anime was not only good, it was brilliant, and the world loved it. I don't know how they did it. But they did it. You can just tell how much love was put into this series by everyone. It has kept the core values of both the characters and the world intact without compromising anything important. Yes, changes were made, but that was mainly to fit the story into eight episodes, which is not an easy task. And the characters didn't suffer from any of these changes because they still felt like the same old characters everybody knew and loved. I mean, some of these things felt shot for shot taken out of the manga or anime, and it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I couldn't get enough of this. Everyone was a standout. No, seriously. There was no bad actors in this show. Every single member of the Straw Hats fucking killed it. Every single one of them. I've got nothing bad to say about any of them. It was brilliant. They were brilliant. It was fantastic. The show was fantastic. And I'm so glad that a season two is coming out. But what am I going to do until then? There's no other way for me to find out what happens next. And I'm super fucking key. What am I supposed to do? Oh, good lord. Yes, that's right, everybody. I started watching the anime. I haven't watched One Piece in about 20 or so years when it first aired here in Australia, but several of my friends and family have told me to get back into it because it's amazing and I'll love it. But for whatever reason, I've put it off for years. Not anymore. And I gotta say, they were right. This series is phenomenal and I get why there is so much love and hype behind this. It really is as good as everybody says it is. And if you like the live action show, you should give the anime a watch. It is worth it. I swear to you. Do not be worried about that number. It is just a number. At the time of recording this, I'm about 450 episodes in. The only reason I'm still at this number is because Netflix doesn't have it all! I've finally been given the kick in the ass to start watching the anime, and that might not have happened anytime soon if it wasn't for the live action show. And that's why it's so high up on my list. And I'm gonna be king of the pirates! Number 3, Across the Spider-Verse. If you know me, you know I'm a big Spider-Man fan and absolutely love the first Spider-Verse movie, so when the sequel was announced, you know expectations for this one were already set at 11 straight from the start. And goddamn, this movie did not disappoint. All my expectations were met and then some. I was even shocked on how much I ended up loving this movie by the end of it. Visually, this movie is like having your eyes on crack the entire time. It is beyond gorgeous. Every single second never misses a beat. Just like the music. Now, I'm not a big music guy, but the music in this movie fucking kills. Oh my god, every single piece of music was brilliant. I love this soundtrack so much. I cannot get enough of it. I'm even listening to it now while I'm making this video. <laughs> the story is phenomenal, cranking everything up to 11, not only in threats, but also for Spider-Man personally. This movie will bring out every kind of emotion under the sun and have you so invested in the story and the characters. Oh my god, the characters. Where do I even start? Spider-Gwen is one of my favorite Spider-People of all time. Every time she was on screen, it was pure bliss. I love her. She is perfect. I can't really say anything more about it. I was introduced to new Spider-Man I've never heard about, but absolutely loved them and really wanted more from them. Shy D, shy means D, bro. Other Spider-Man I did know about in the past, but never really cared about them and didn't really like them in this movie at first, only for them to become my favorite character by the end of it. <laughs> and finally getting Spider-Man 2099 in some kind of movie. I've been waiting for this for years, and they fucking killed it! Oscar Isaac killed this role. You're not supposed to be Spider-Man! No! You're lying! I'm Spider-Man! You're a mistake! 
2099 has never looked, sounded, or been cooler in my opinion. But the real star is definitely Miles. Miles is my favorite Spider-Man, and this version of the character embodies all the reasons why I love him so much. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. Words to fucking live by, and he does it like a king! Don't even get me started on the spot, that thing is terrifying, and I love it! This movie is a masterpiece, and I love everything about it. Well, almost everything. My only gripe with this movie is that it ends on a cliffhanger, and I have to wait YEARS FOR THE NEXT ONE! Number 2 Godzilla. Minus one. Yeah, that. When this movie was first announced, I thought, nice, a new monster movie for me to watch. I'm just hoping it's gonna be better than Shin Godzilla. My expectations were at a solid six, but I had no real hope for this movie. I have never been more wrong. Reviews came in like wildfire, spreading the insanely positive reviews about this movie from both critics and audience alike. There was finally balance in the universe. Impossible. Some were saying it's one of the best movies of 2023. YouTubers I follow and don't follow have been making videos raving about how good this movie is. It's a fucking Godzilla movie! How can it be this good? Now I'm a massive Godzilla fan. I've seen every movie. Old ones, new ones, animated, you name it, I've seen it. But I never, NEVER thought a Godzilla movie would be so well received worldwide and to be considered one of the best movies of the year. My expectations went from a 6 to 20 in an instant. And I had to see this movie. I had to see this movie. And after I did, I was completely blown away. Fucking Christ! What the hell did I just watch? Because that's not a Godzilla movie. That is a masterpiece. How the fuck did they do it? They did everything right. You've all heard it before. It's an amazing story, terrifying Godzilla, and humans that were not boring. That's the hardest thing to believe here. Humans were not boring. And to top it off, a budget that would be considered poor for any blockbuster in this day and age. And yet it's given the giant middle finger to all of Hollywood's movies that cost several hundred million dollars, and yet they suck. The fact that a Godzilla movie has done this has put the biggest smile on my face. I can't express how happy I am that this has come to be. This is a dream come true for me. And because of all of this, this movie nearly made the number one spot. It was so, so close. Number one, Spider-Man 2. We all knew this was going to be on my list, and for me, it had to be number one. I have loved Insomniac Spider-Man games from the very beginning back in 2018 and the follow-up Miles Morales game. So Spider-Man 2's expectations were already through the roof. Now this is not a perfect game by any means whatsoever. I've run into several bugs into this game, but the flaws that this game has are so monumentally small to me compared to the enormous amount of shit this game got right. All my expectations were met and well exceeded. Traversal was so much more fun in this game. Again, why is flying so much fun? Combat felt better to me, characters continued to be brilliant as ever, and the story, the story man, it fucking killed it. The symbiote storyline is one of my favorite Spider-Man stories of all time, and I loved what they did with it in this game. The symbiote has never seemed more scary to me than it did in this game. But Pete's not the only one facing demons. Miles has his own with the return of Mr. Negative. Both characters have to overcome them in order to save not only their home, but later the world from Venom. The portrayal and execution of the characters is without a doubt the highest of high points in this game. I loved both Peter and Miles individually and together. God damn it did I love them together. MJ was another standout character in this game, having her own demons in the form of a boss, constantly facing conflictions with doing what is needed to keep her job and to do what is right. She wasn't just on the sidelines for this, she was right there in the action with the main characters. This is probably my favorite version of MJ we've ever had. Craven was a real surprise in this game. I don't like him in other iterations, 
But this game did him so much justice. He was truly a terrifying, powerful bad guy that lived up to being one of the big bads of this game. I absolutely loved his story, especially how it ended. But the biggest standout has to go to Venom. Venom was unfucking believable. Now, I like Eddie Brock Venom, but Harry Osborn Venom brought so much more to the table. The dialogue between Venom and Spider Man held so much more weight because it wasn't coming from a place of hatred, it was coming from a place of love. This is where we became best friends, and now it's where we become brothers. Spider Man wasn't just trying to beat one of his greatest enemies, he was trying to save his best friend. Everything is different, and that's why I love Venom so much. Every time he is on screen, every time he has dialogue, it is just beautiful. It is unfucking real. Venom is one of my favorite characters in all of Marvel, and this is just a fucking magnificent version of him. God damn it! There are so many other great things about this game that I could just go on for hours about, but this is already going on long enough. This game lived up to the very, very high expectations I had for it, and while it didn't win anything at the Game Awards, this game, Spider-Man 2, is my game of the year. And that is my list. It should go without saying that this is based off my personal opinions. It is not definitive, it is not absolute, you don't have to agree with it all. Hell, you don't have to agree with any of it, it's all subject to opinion. But this is just based off the things I experienced in 2023, and of course, I didn't experience everything. Some things probably and should have made this list, but I didn't get to them. But that's next year's problem. If you like this video, please let me know, and what was your favorite thing of 2023? Both of these you can let me know down below. See you in 2024. But wait, it's already 2024.